Hello, everybody, and welcome. Welcome to the third talk of our Entrepreneur in Residence program. Miriam Turk, our Entrepreneur in Residence, will be speaking today. As Toronto Public Library's first Entrepreneur in Residence, she brings her experience and mentorship to Torontonians creating and building small businesses. And now, without further ado, please welcome Miriam Turk. I'm a co-founder in a clean tech startup called Clearblue Technologies. Um, and my last project was in big data software, so I've mostly been in technology. But um, we find today that many of the businesses need to either use technology or the internet to sell to their customers or to enable their businesses. So most of what we uh, learn in that sector is applicable everywhere. Um, Today we're going to talk about marketing and sales and how to get customers, which is one of the most important things in making any business successful. Um, I have a business sales background. I spent most of my career in, in selling, but mostly on the business side. And so I asked one of my colleagues from Mars, Nathan Monk, to join me today because he has a consumer and retail uh, marketing background. He worked at Yahoo and a number of other areas. I'll let Nathan introduce um, himself to you when we get uh, when it gets to his section. So the two of us are going to present together today, give you a little bit of interesting con uh, con uh, content. Um, and at the end of the session, there'll be a fair amount of time for questions and answers. So if you just make sure you track all of your questions, hopefully we can have a really great interactive dialogue at that point in time. So I thought I would just spend uh, a few minutes talking about um, the evolution of sales and marketing. Um, because for those of us who've been around a few years um, and remember how things have changed so quickly, um, and they have changed, I think if you ask people how many years do they think the iPhone's been around, it's only been around for three or four years, and people think it's been around for 10 or 15 years, and it hasn't. Um, but if you've you know, been in business or you know, seen technology evolve over the last 10 or 20 years, um, you've seen how much the internet has changed the world and today you can shop online and have something shipped and you go onto Google to go shopping and you use that instead of your yellow pages and I think one of the things that people don't realize um, is that the one of the biggest impacts of the internet is how it has changed sales and marketing I would say that sales and marketing is probably changed more because of the internet and that technology than even hardware and computing and technology power. It's changed more. And just to give you kind of an example, and I can give you dozens and dozens and dozens of examples of this, uh, whether it be for business or for consumer, but just to take an example, if you go back 10 or 15 years ago, you might have sold a product or a service for $10,000. When you sold that product or service for $10,000, you might have had two competitors. You know, maybe I'm a landscape architect and I'm talking to a customer and they're getting two quotes from somebody else. Um, and when I was selling that $10,000 offering, I was gonna actually make $5,000 as a business. So out of my $5,000 that I was gonna make out of the business, I could spend $2,000 on sales and marketing. If I could pay someone a $1,500 commission, they'd get 15% on the sale, and I still have $500 left to put brochures and do advertising and that kind of thing. And Usually what happened in that market, I've been in sales for 25 years, you'd kind of have a sales funnel where for every three proposals that you did, you got one sale. In today's world, that very same thing, it's $1,000 instead of $10,000. Now you've got 20 competitors. It's possible that there's a landscape designer in India who provides on-scape land landscape designing them, along with the pictures that you send them from your street view and they send a pre-designed mock-up because they've gone onto Google Street View to see what your house looks like and said here's a free image for you. Um, so this it's being sold for a lot less money which one of that one of the reasons for that is we the middle class or or even um, uh, the lower middle class now has access to things we never used to have. Most of us have dishwashers, most of us have color TVs. I can remember when my dad's friend had a color TV and we didn't, right? Now everybody has a color TV. The reason is because that $10,000 color TV is now 200 bucks and people have figured out how to make it cheaper that everybody can buy it. So that $10,000 product's $1,000. 
There's 20 competitors, and it's not just the guy down the street around the corner. Uh, and you're not going to make 50% margin. You're going to make 30% margin. So now instead of making $5,000 and spending $2,000 in sales and marketing, I'm going to make $300, and I can spend 50 bucks on sales and marketing. And oh, by the way, for every 20 proposals that I, or people that I'm talking to for proposal, I'm actually going to close one deal. So that's how sales and marketing has changed. And it's changed because when I decided to go shopping, yesterday I bought a labeler. I was looking at two sites for labelers. Picked out which ones it was. I was talking to Tim. He's a really great guy. And then I went, customer service problems with Duralabel. Right? So I, that's, why, that's why that's happened and that's changed. It doesn't matter what service or product. So how do you have this nice relationship where I'm talking to Nathan and I'm selling him the service and I'm giving him information so we're establishing a personal bond and we take a lot of time doing that, which was a little bit of an art, it was a relationship sell, and turn it into a factory where for 50 bucks commission, I can hire some guy off the street to sell the same product. And really what that's all about is that sales and marketing has changed from an art to a science. Anybody here done advertising through Google? So you know most companies now have shifted their spend from advertising on TV to advertising on Google. Yeah, Number so, one. Uh, can I ask a question? Sure. I'm not good at the I'm not good at science, so what, what, what should I do? That, that's my question. Because uh, you're saying art and science, I'm not good at both. So and I have kind of just a couple of mm -hmm. ideas that I may think, oh my goodness, you, you, you will never make a... Uh, that, that's my question. So, so let me just uh, uh, finish the Google oh, story and then I'll answer that question and then we'll come we'll go through the presentation. So oh, okay. the reason why people go to Google is because when they do an ad on Google, they actually see what you do with it. They know whether you clicked on it, they know whether you read it, they know whether you spent five minutes on it or whether you spent five seconds on it. And if they put the ad on TV, they don't have any of that information. So the science is it gives you data. So to answer your question, if you don't know how to sell and market, and you're trying to figure that out, the science is try to sell one way, and if, when it doesn't work, evolve it. But know what works and doesn't work. Use scientific methods. Use a calculator. Use numbers to figure out what's going to work and not work. That's the basic high-level difference between, oh, I'm just going to kind of feel it out and see what works. Great for an artist who's selling paintings who kind of figures out that you like fall colors in the fall, so we're going to give you paintings with lots of oranges and rusts in the fall. But in sales and marketing, it's the numbers that count and really getting into the details. Okay? So I just thought I would spend a few minutes on some high level things. So at this point, the presentation is divided into two pieces. First, we're going to talk about marketing, and then we're going to talk about sales. And what's the difference between marketing and sales? Marketing is when one person or one company is selling to a whole bunch of people, a wide audience. So I call it the one to N model. I am right now presenting to you and one, one person presenting to N people. Sales is like tutoring. I'm having a one to one sales conversation. So marketing is when I'm trying to sell to an entire audience and sales is now out of that entire audience. I got the same person as a one to one discussion. Okay. So I'm going to turn it over to Nathan now. Uh, Nathan um, works with me at something called MARS, which is a Toronto-based uh, organization that helps early stage technology companies. If you are in the technology area, you can come and speak to either Nathan or I afterwards, but in Toronto, it is the go-to place to get help. It, all it does is provide free helpful services to help companies get going. And he has an expertise around marketing, uh, digital marketing, internet marketing, and is going to talk a little bit about that today. Nathan, here you go. Thank you. Hi. Yeah, as Miriam uh, mentioned, thank you, Miriam. Uh, my name is Nathan Monk. I work at the Mars Discovery District, which is an innovation center uh, located at a college and university. Um, it is an innovation center which helps entrepreneurs with their passion of building um, technology companies, healthcare companies in their healthcare space, social innovation, and clean tech. 
My background is kind of a mix mash of, I've been loitering around marketing for quite some time since I graduated at Yahoo and Ken West and CBC and the media side, mostly on digital strategy marketing and some traditional marketing as well. How many in the room are, have an online or mobile business or an online and mobile channel for an existing bricks and mortar? So some, okay, are we all entrepreneurs in the room? Are we great? Okay, we've got one viciously, <laughs> it's great. <laughs> Excellent. Um, so today's presentation, stop me at any time. Uh, there is no silly question, as an old boss used to say. Uh, the silly questions are the ones that are never asked. So please, um, ask away. Uh, so we'll talk a lot about digital marketing, which can be very daunting. It can seem very confusing if you've never done it before. But it has a huge implication to how you raise awareness, attract consumers or customers, and then retain them and keep them loyal within your business, whether it is a, uh, a traditional business or an online business. So there's a famous marketer, who's read the Alan Trout book, Positioning, came out in 1983, 82. He had a great, um, he wrote a great book called Positioning, How We Break Through the Noise. And, and when we think about it today, we're bombarded with messages, um, depending on what profession you're in, um, depending on, on how digital adapt you are, you're bombarded with thousands, hundreds, in fact, messages a day without even realizing it. So as a marketer, like me, how do you break through the noise? How do you connect with people? How do you really raise awareness of a product or service and drive them into your business? And so, just step back. There's this funnel that a user, or a, I call them user, sorry, customer or, or consumer uses uh, as they go through the purchase cycle or marketing cycle. So as, as Miriam was mentioning, um, sales is, is more of a one-on-one -on -one process. Marketing is, 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 is one to many. First you have to, in this side of the funnel, acquire customers. Then you have to activate them or, or, or bring them into the business. They have to actually open the door um, if you're, you know, you're, you're, you're selling coffee or, or uh, goods. Um, they have to actually visit your website if you're selling something online. Then you have to keep them. You have to keep them loyal. You have to do that. If you think of the businesses that we all, we all uh, um, populate on a daily basis, um, it's service that keeps us going there. It is a really strong, high-quality product that keeps us going there. It might be someone you know. It might be something that you absolutely need. Groceries, for instance, great, great example. So how do you keep customers in your business? How do you then upsell them, next sell them, cross sell them, and refer them? Keep them referring people into your business. As we all know, word of mouth is critically important for any business. The same is true online. Having a good reputation, having a very strong service, um, value proposition and positioning statement is really critical. So I'll just step forward. Positioning is not what you do to a product. Positioning is what you do to the mind of the prospect. That is, you position the product in the mind of the prospect. That's a quote from uh, Al Reese on positioning. And, and what he means by that is it's less about pushing a message out it's about connecting and owning a piece of that user or customer's mind. When we think about it, it's all about perception. It's all about what does that person perceive of your product or service. How can we own a little piece of that mind, that little piece, piece of brand or mind share with whatever our messaging is? And so there's a number of ways to take people through that. It's, first of all, understanding your product. What makes it different than any other product out there? What makes it different than the competitor's product? Understand your market. So where are you selling? Are you selling locally? Are you selling nationally? Do you want to sell nationally? Or do you want to scale across the US or Europe? Understand your target. Who is the target that you're speaking to? Do you have a persona? Can you actually, I, some businesses that I, some clients that I work with, can actually tell me, they'll have a persona of their customer. They'll be able to tell me what this person does when, when he or she wakes up in the morning to when they go to bed at night. That's how detailed, how, how um, deep of an understanding through research you need to have of your customer in order to take them through that funnel that I was showing you earlier. So understand your market, understand your target, understand timing. So when do you sell? When is it most appropriate to sell? In the online and digital world, we all know that traffic tends to dip over the weekends or over the summer. 
That's because people are away. They're out of town, they're vacationing, they're doing other things, they're getting outside. Especially in Canada, we, <laughs> we really enjoy those summer months, and so we get outside. And so how do you market to them outside? What are some of the other traditional forms of, of marketing, such as print and out of home, that you can use, which we'll get into in a bit. So that is a nice segue into the last statement, number five, tactics. What are the tactics? If you're in the military, you have tactics to, to go into a country or to, to mitigate a war. It's the same in marketing. You have to have tactics or strategic plan to enter a market, raise awareness, and acquire users. Um, so product. A, a product position is really a single, clear, and compelling message that states why you're different and worth buying. It's quite simple. Why are you different? Why are you worth buying? Why is a Starbucks coffee that much different than a Tim Hortons? Both speak to, to, to people that love coffee, but what about those two audiences make them different? And how come both are extremely successful at reaching those audiences? So it's really understanding that target. It's having a very clear and compelling product positioning statement for each target. Features. So pick the most valuable features. Beware of feature creep. If you're a store, it, the first, the first uh, you know, thing you want to do is to be, be something to everybody in your marketing messaging. That's the first thing that I notice in traditional businesses and, and online as well. Pick the most important features that that consumer, that target customer wants from your business. What are the greatest problems that you're solving for them? A lot of businesses come from problems, like Dyson, the vacuum cleaner. Um, notice that there's no need to be spending you know, a fortune on replacing uh, filters or bags for, their, for vacuums. So Mr. Dyson came up with the vacuum that was filterless or bagless and is now extremely successful. And now there's fans that don't have blades. And they're, he's, he's extended into different categories with products that are solving large problems for consumers. So if we think about it, even coming here today, the TTC, I'm like I'm waiting in line for 10 minutes. It's, a, it's raining. Am I, am I going to be late for this? Oh, great. I'm going to be late. So there's a high anxiety. How could I, as a user, try to fix the TTC? And a lot of us are probably rolling our eyes going, OK, <laughs> good luck. But here's an example of a problem that can be, can be intact. In fact, in the digital world, Specifically in transportation, there's a lot of different apps now that you can download that help you. They can tell you when the next train is coming or when the next uh, streetcar is coming, um, as just an example, as a segue. So pick the greatest solution. Have a backstory. And what I mean by having a backstory to your business, whether it's a store, an online, or a mobile offering, is pick all the elements that make it really magnetic and attractive to those users. And validate, validate, validate. If there's anything that you take away from, from me babbling on up here, it's validate that your messaging is resonating with your target user. It's getting outside the building, as we like to say at Mars, testing it with a group of users. Before you go and spend a fortune on marketing or building a business, make sure that that messaging is resonating with those target users that potentially use your um, target customers or consumers that would potentially use your, your service. Um, great quote from Ash Moira. Your objective is to find a big enough market uh, that you can reach with customers who need your product that will pay a price you can build a business around. That, to me, kind of sums it all up. It's what market, if it's a local business, where am I locating this coffee shop? Where am I locating this clothing store? Where am I locating this? A particular product or service is really, really key. Is it close to those customer segments? Can I easily attract, raise awareness, and drive them into my location? Pick a price that the customer segment um, that can maximize your margin and that is uh, validated with your customer segment. And choosing a price is one of the most difficult things, as we all know, we do in a business because margin is everything. It pays the bills, it keeps the lights on. Um, it allows you to attract more cash for equity, etc. And so choosing a price is all about price perception in, in your customer's mind. It's comparables in markets, so what are your competitors charging? And it's what service or quality and brand that's attached to your product or service that allows you to, to, to drive price and margin. Start in small markets and go large. 
the, this is the best way to test. If, if, for instance, if Tim Hortons is testing a new um, latte, they'll test it in London, Ontario, which is a small uh, market, and then roll it out across the country. The same is true for any business. It's test small with your messaging, with your product or service, until you get it resonating with, with your users or customers, and then expand, keep investing as you go. And validate, 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 which is on every slide. 